We're here at the Battle of Doom Mosque in Morden, and this is the largest mosque in London, in fact the UK, in fact Europe. So uh, today we're expecting a Friday because uh, it's a holiday for many of the school children, so we're expecting about maybe six, seven thousand people here today. And uh, of course the public has started coming, we've got lots of car parks covered by our, our stewards to make sure they don't uh, uh, come here and cause traffic jams. So we try and get people off the roads as quickly as possible and then the pedestrians come in to the mosque here and uh, come in, both ladies and men are coming in from the various car parks around the, around the town and coming into the site. So as you can see this is the entrance, a demolition is going on at the moment because we had that fire uh, back in September. 2015 and of course uh, we're now in a massive rebuilding program to build something quite spectacular it's an iconic building and Merton wants us to want us to build something quite special they the people walk towards the mosque which is all the way to the back because of course it's facing Mecca and uh, Mecca's direction is sort of uh, 119 degrees north and so this is the direction and then obviously because the ladies and men are segregated in most of our functions uh, in this, uh, Islamically, that's the way that we do things here, that most of the uh, ladies go into the ladies' prayer hall and the men go into the pray men's prayer hall. But in Pakistan, our, com our community has been persecuted. The laws were brought in that made us, considered us non-Muslim in Pakistan. And for us to declare ourselves Muslims or to use any of the Muslim literature or use the, the declaration of faith, which is there is only one God and Muhammad is messenger, carries a three-year prison sentence for any of our members. So most of our mosques have been closed down, our members can't practice their faith, and in fact that applies now, it's, it, that seems to be spreading around some of the extremists uh, around the world. So we, a lot of persecution takes place as a result of that. Obviously all the books here are very Islamic, they do a lot of, we do a lot of translation of the Holy Quran, it's been translated into 70 languages, um, it's a work that our community has been doing for many, many years. So I think you'll find that because of the persecution that took place in Pakistan, many of our people uh, had to leave Pakistan, including our, our, uh, our leader, our fifth caliph, whose photograph is up there. Um, he came here um, and the, the community has progressed in the UK in a better way, I think, than it would have had he remained in Pakistan because he just could not operate as a, we couldn't operate as an organization, as an international organization. So there's been a constant you know, feeding of people as they come in, they eat and then they go. So many, as I said, many of these are people who, who are working uh, on the site. Some are volunteers, some are who don't normally have families to. So they have a constant meal every time they come here, they, they know they're going to get served a meal. So I'll get you to, to the kitchen. Tea's on tap 24 hours. Yeah? I think there's some people eating in there as well. Someone working inside. Food is uh, very basic today, it's just lentils. It's not much. Uh... Mr. Lake is our head chef. He's the man that cooks most of the meals here. That's how they do it, okay, Very good cooks. So you see all the pots are on the fires, this is how we... Um, and this was the old kitchen for the bottling plant, but obviously we extended it and readapted it to our, to our use. That's lentil. How many people are we preparing today? How many, how many meals? Uh, today we're about uh, 250. 250, 250 meals, yeah. 250 now, and then 250 for the evening maybe again. Huh? Is other? 1100, 1100 for ladies tomorrow and for lunch for and 1800 for the men, yeah. So tomorrow, because it's Saturday, there will be a big crowd here. Um, 2900 tomorrow. Two, okay, nearly 3000 meals tomorrow. Excellent. So on the Friday night and Saturday night. Friday and Tuesday. And Tuesday, sorry. Friday and Tuesday, they prepare meals um, and package them and take them to the feed the homeless in London every uh, twice a week. Uh, and that's been going on for many, many years now. Yes. Many years.
basically this is where the men's entrance officially, this is where they come in through our, our multi-purpose hall. And uh, this also acts as an overflow for the, for the prayer hall. So once the prayer halls are full, then the multi-purpose hall is used to, to, everything behind the imam effectively becomes part of the mosque. So this is the multi-purpose hall, the washrooms are all on both sides. And security is obviously because of the persecution of our community and an attack on our mosques in Pakistan in particular, we had two very, very severe uh, attacks on our mosques on Friday prayers a few years back. And uh, since then, our security has been heightened. Generally, it's the same, it's the same people. The same people who, who uh, create havoc around the world are creating havoc for us, either the extremists on the Muslim side or extremists on the other side. So for us, you know, we, we get it from both ends and therefore we, we're, we have to be doubly careful. Um, but um, for us, you know, it's, it's a real, it's, it's not just a perceived threat, it is a real threat and therefore we take security very, very seriously. Okay, this is the Aftab Khan Library. It's named uh, after one of her uh, national leaders and um, it has uh, 14,727 books uh, when we last counted. It's used by members of the community and also members of the wider community. There's not a library nearby, so um, this is uh, comes into very um, handy use, if I can use that phrase. We want to make ourselves open as possible as a mosque, as a complex and as a library. Um, we have um, um, some 4,000 school children visiting the mosque complex every year um, and they invariably will come to the library as well and look at uh, the Quran and uh, the way that it's written, the Arabic, and uh, how, um, and a bit about how to get to learn to read Arabic at a young age. Um, so yes, so uh, it, it's something that is, that uh, we find um, um, the wider community being able to benefit from. The other thing that we also do on a regular basis is we have interfaith um, meetings here and that takes place in the exhibition hall. This is the largest mosque in Europe. It can, when we had the full uh, facilities, we could have up to 10 to 12,000 people for prayers here. And we used to get uh, approximately those numbers on special occasions. And on Fridays, which is a very special day, uh, we have pr approximately 5,000 people who come here for prayers. It also provides facilities for the larger community. So for instance, uh, the college, Merton College, they will use our halls for examinations. The local authority comes here to hold meetings here. The police hold their meetings here. And other people from the local community come and use the facilities. So the all, all world faiths were expecting the second coming of the Messiah the Christians, the Jewish people, the Hindus, the Muslims. And we believe the promised Messiah has come. And we believe he came in India over a hundred years ago. And really, he came not to bring a new faith or new teaching. He came to reestablish the true teaching of Islam. And we believe that he came to revive the true teaching of Islam. And he, he actually pr promoted uh, the message of peace to the people of the world and he wanted to bring the communities together under a, a peaceful umbrella. Mm -hmm.